Welcome back to the Algarve. You know how Samsung and Apple spend billions trying to shave a millimetre here, a gram there from their flagship phones, only to see their efforts wasted by owners slapping giant cases on them? Well, I've been observing the same phenomenon recently with adventure bikes in general, and the new Transalp in particular. It comes out of the factory refreshingly accessory-free, and then after five minutes of option ticking by an overeager buyer, ends up looking like this. I think there's a simpler, cheaper, lighter and more aesthetic alternative to traditional full-height crash bars, at least for the casual off-road like me. And do you really need to carry that much stuff? One thing that appealed to me when I was looking for an adventure bike with the Transalp was Honda's bare-bones approach. They don't give you much beyond an engine, a seat and some handlebars, but this means they're able to keep the price low and it gives me the choice of what I really want to add. The quick shifter was really the only manufacturer's option I was interested in and fortunately I got my order in early enough to enjoy Honda Portugal's week-long launch promotion of a free shifter so I didn't even have to pay for that. And as a casual off-roader I wanted to add a bit of protection ready for when I drop the bike as I inevitably will one day when out on a gravel road. But Honda's overzealous approach to the sump guard in particular left me cold and full height crash bars have never really appealed to me. They add weight high up, they're prone to vibration and aesthetically, well to be honest they remind me a bit of the bike I passed my test on. What I really wanted was a lighter more visually discreet solution that would protect mainly the engine but also of course the fairing. So I've gone with a pair of lower crash bars combined with some proper reinforced handguards. Honda make lower crash bars and handguards of course, I hear you cry, yes they do, but their handguards are plastic and so will break as soon as the bike hits the ground and the crash bars are silver which stands out too much against the black engine. They're also designed for Honda's enormous sump guard, also silver, which while undoubtedly very effective is too heavy and cumbersome for what I actually need. The idea is, as you can see here, that in the event of a fall, the bike will be supported by the lower engine guard and the hand guards. I went with Hepco and Becker guards for the engine, link in the description, as they are mounted low and slightly towards the front of the bike and stick out just far enough to keep the fairing out of harm's way. Objection, Your Honour. Ground is never perfectly flat like this and if there's a rock, it's going to touch the fairing anyway. Correct. But the same could be said about full height bars too. If you're unlucky, a rock is going to be in the wrong place and go straight through the bars. Objection number two. I like full height bars because I can put auxiliary lights on them. Now, I don't want to get into a debate about whether or not extra lights are necessary or not, but if you do want to fit them, may I suggest that you wait for a mounting bracket to come out. This owner has already fitted a pair of lights to his Transalp by slightly modifying the bracket for a Yamaha Tenere uh, that's made by SW Motec, so it can be done. Objection number three, I like full size crash bars because I can fit side bags to them. Hmm, I don't know. I get the need for storage, but putting your stuff in a bag that's attached to crash bars seems to me to be asking for trouble. Wouldn't a tank bag or tail bag be a safer place? Fair enough if you really, really want side bags at the front though. Objection number four, full crash bars make me look tough. Yeah, okay, sustained. For the type of riding I do though, and for the things that I like to carry, I think the lower crash bars and strong handguards combination is the way to go. I haven't tested this yet on the Transalp, but I had a very similar setup from SW Motec on my 2019 CB500X, and I dropped that a half a dozen times with no damage other than a few scratches to the bars that you can see in this photo. I touched them up with some black paint to avoid oxidation, but the bike escaped unharmed. If I remember correctly, I dropped it one stupidly while manoeuvring in the garage, so onto perfectly flat ground, and three or four times on tracks like this. Okay, not the toughest off-road adventures ever, but this is why I'm happy with a simpler, lighter solution. Installation of the bars wasn't particularly difficult. It took me about 90 minutes for both sides, including regular brakes to take all these photos, but it does involve removing the front fairing to fit the optional support plate, which is necessary if you have chosen not to fit the upper bars. Removing the fairing is fairly straightforward. Unscrew the three bolts, 
pop the two trim clips inside the fairing here and here and then just basically pull the fairing towards you. Then it's just a question of following the instructions. As I said, not especially complicated, although access to some of the bolts is awkward and you'll need a multitude of different spanners and hex keys as every single nut and bolt seem to be a slightly different size. Once the bars are on and all the bolts hand tight, you then need to go around talking them all up correctly and that's about it. I also fitted these plastic bumpers that I had knocking around in the garage. Okay, probably superfluous and almost certainly brittle, but they're very light and do give an extra centimeter or so extra clearance in the event of a drop. And they also allowed me to cover up the chip in the paint that my left hand bar had sustained somewhere between factory and delivery. Oh, what about the handguards? Well, Bart Busters have a good reputation and they do offer a variety of colors, including the white that I wanted, so I went with them. A service, SW Motec, and a couple of other suppliers also offer similar designs. Bart Busters Transalp specific model wasn't available until a few days ago, so these are actually for the Africa Twin. They fit the bars perfectly, but I did have to reuse the original Honda bar ends rather than those provided in the Bart Busters kit. However, Barkbusters have kindly agreed to send me the necessary hardware to swap them over as the Transalp fitments are now available. Installation took about half an hour, no real difficulties other than making sure you avoid the components rubbing on the wiring and of course making sure the guards don't foul the screen when the bars are on full lock. The factory low screen on the Transalp that you can see here is fine, but if you've got a wider aftermarket screen then you'll probably need to check measurements carefully before ordering. I would also caution against over tightening the screws that hold the plastic guards to the relatively soft aluminium and those that hold the deflector extension to the even softer plastic. I managed not to strip any of the threads but I bet it's really easy to do and the holes feel as if you only get a couple of goes at it so this is not really an accessory you can remove and refit numerous times. Another installation tip would be to use a bit of cloth tape on the handlebars where the brackets are attached to avoid damaging the black uh, powder coat. Total fitting time was about half an hour, 25 minutes for the first side, then five minutes for the second, as is often the case because I knew what I was doing. The instructions are very concise, more like a parts list really, so a bit of head scratching was needed first time round. I actually used these Cobra Guards from SW Motec on my CB500X in 2019. They felt just as solid as the Bark Busters, but they're slightly smaller and only available in black. I wanted white for my Transalp. And I always found the finish to be slightly below par for a manufacturer otherwise renowned for their attention to quality. The shiny black finish didn't look very premium or match any of the plastics used on either the CB500X or the Transalp. But aesthetics is a very subjective thing, and this was five years ago, so they may have updated the design now. If they match your bike, then they're a good option and do the job. The third and final mod in this video is an accessory bar. I had originally fitted my phone mount to the center of the handlebars, but this wasn't great as it meant taking my eyes off the road to check directions, and it also made my tank bag's release mechanism hard to access. AliExpress to the rescue again with this uh, 12 euro bar originally designed for the Honda NC750X. The vertical brackets attach uh, directly to the screen mount and then it's just a case of screwing everything back together. No instructions provided but it's pretty self-explanatory and it only took me about 15 minutes. In terms of quality the vertical brackets are fine but the finish of the horizontal bar feels a bit lightweight. It does the job though and everything is held very firmly in place. I added two rubber washers at the end of the horizontal bar to further reduce vibration and the phone seems just as happy there as it did lower down on the handlebars and of course it's much easier to read. Now full disclosure. I paid for all these accessories with my own money after considerable research online. Hepco and Becker did give me a discount on their engine crash bars when I told them I was a mega important YouTube influencer and that I'd be doing a review, but hand on heart, and I probably shouldn't admit this, I would have paid full price even if they hadn't because their bars are exactly what I'd been looking for. I did pay full price for the Barkbusters and the admittedly not very expensive accessory bar, but to be on the safe side, as I did get a discount on the engine guard, I thought I'd better declare it to you and to YouTube, hence the Include Paid Promotion pop-up at the beginning. I've included all relevant links in the description for your information. 
Finally, in my previous video, I asked you if you'd be interested in the riding gear I use, and the response was largely positive. I've never really bothered reviewing gear before, as I think it's very much a personal thing, but if I come across genuinely good, innovative stuff, I'll let you know. So a shout out this week to these Tyrannis Elite single layer riding jeans from Roadskin in the UK. AAA rated, I like them primarily because they're so comfortable. They're made from a stretchy denim-like material. I think there's some lycra in there somewhere. They're available in black or this dark indigo blue, and they genuinely feel like regular jeans, almost like jogging pants, in fact. They're so comfortable. The cut is good, especially in the gusset area where other riding jeans often feel a bit restrictive on me. They're slim but not skinny or tight and just feel, well, nice on and off the bike. Here in southern Portugal, I use them more or less all year round, although on the very hottest summer days, say 28 degrees centigrade and above, I do prefer my mesh trousers as these offer more ventilation. The only negative of these jeans really is the price, around 215 euros, 180, 190 pounds. But I reached out to Roadskin ahead of this video and they were kind enough to offer viewers to this channel a 10% discount on orders using the code ROCKETMAN. Anyway, enough with the fashion tips. For the next mods video, I'm hoping to have Hepco and Becker's stump guard and some bits and pieces from SW Motec, including these new for summer 2023 hard luggage solutions that they released uh, recently with this teaser video, and which could be just what I'm looking for for my Transalp travel, so stick around for that. Let me know what you think of the lower engine guard plus hand guard option as an alternative to full height crash bars. And as always, thanks for watching.